Good evening, everyone. This is Pine Leaf Needles, and welcome to DDO Players News, where we take a look at the latest news in DDO and here at DDO Players. And please welcome my co-host from Ravenloft, Draculetta. Greetings, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well this Monday evening, where we have a lot of news this week, for once. Uh, ah, good. They've finally gotten out of their vacations, and we have our producer's letter, which, first off, there's... A new producer. Yes, there is. Uh, we would like to congratulate, congratulate, if I can talk tonight, that would be helpful, Severlin on his promotion. He was a developer and very active in the forums. Well, he is now our executive producer as Vivian has moved over to Lotro, it would seem. So congratulations to Severlin on the promotion. And we look forward to seeing what he will do. And he hopped right in with the producer's letter. Basically, he talked about uh, what happened last year, talked about how they brought out the Haunted Halls, which everybody really, really enjoyed, which we actually haven't done yet because we're not high enough level. (laughs) Um, And he also talked about the Mirror of Glamoring, and he talked about the Monster Champions a little bit. But what everybody wants to know is what's coming ahead for DDO. And he was very kind in spilling some beans there. He talked about the Temple of Elemental Evil. Of course, everybody is looking forward to that. That is the next big update. Ooh, that reminds me. I need to get my Temple of Elemental Evil character ready for that. (laughs) And he says uh, the, the Temple Grounds are quite large. Although players will be presented with a quest to accomplish when they enter the temple, there will be many dangers and treasures to find if the players take the time to properly explore the vast network of temple halls and chambers. So I take that to mean this is going to be a good old-fashioned dungeon crawl. Oh, yeah, that's what it looks like to me all. looks like you could play it as a as either a quest in... Maybe it's only a long dungeon, or you could do it extra, extra, extra long with a full-length dungeon crawl. Which is amazing! (laughs) Also, Monster Champions and Mysterious Fragments. Characters facing the game's toughest challenges have encountered a wide variety of Monster Champions. These are creatures that have increased skill and power. What is causing this increase in power? As characters investigate the source of the newfound strength... They will begin to discover that many of the creatures carry mysterious fragments that seem to resonate with a strange magical power. Could these fragments be causing these champions to raise their power? What use could these fragments be used for? So yes, monster champions will now, um, going to, or in the future, will have a chance to drop these mysterious fragments. Players can gather these fragments, and various agents and interested parties might trade them for a variety of rewards. Not another thing to collect. (laughs) Well, of course. (laughs) So yeah, so we'll have to see what they're going to do with that, and I know there's some threads in the forum about that already. Rumors of groups offering scrolls, potions, cosmetic items, and even prestigious and rare pets have begun to surface. (laughs) Hmm. Ooh, I wonder what rare pets we could be talking about. Snowy owlbears? We already have those. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's not rare enough. They're already here, so. Okay. <laughs> we'll have to see. And also, we might, and I stress the word might, be getting a new class during the next year. They are looking at bringing the Warlock in. The Warlock creates powerful Eldritch Blast to destroy enemies in addition to a variety of spells to aid them in their adventures. Um, what are your thoughts on bringing the Warlock in? Well, I have... I'm trying to think if I've ever played a Warlock. I don't think so, but it's, it's based on what I remember from 3rd edition. The Warlock is very different from a wizard or a or a sorcerer. Yeah, it is, and that's what I yeah. know. Uh... And they're almost like a pure cannon, I almost feel like, that they are. Oh, definitely. Yeah, especially if you treat them properly. Yeah, they're they can be a big glass cannon. Yeah. So, and I know a lot of people in the forums were kind of disappointed in the warlock, 
And but then I went back and grabbed my three point five books because it's been a while, and I looked. And it's like you are correct; they are way different. It's not like they're bringing just another magic class in. They are a totally different type of magic class. Y- so. Yes, if I remember right, that they're more like a. I got the impression that they're almost that they're almost medium armor in their style, as opposed to light armor that you mm-hmm. have with most wizards. And they're a little bit more on the website, and that they use their weapons and focus their magic through that, and then just blast out. <laughs> These sets, I guess I should get out my 3.5 books and double check on F that still still think that's the opinion on the matter. Or, of course, there's always my 5 one and see how much they've changed over <laughs> since then. And also, we're going to get some new storylines. Uh, he goes on to say the game will introduce a new story arc that will take the players to Jabberoth for a new adventure pack. Characters on these adventures will work to prevent a catastrophe. That story will continue as the year progresses to bring players once again into the Veil of Twilight. New threats have entered the Veil, and more powerful challenges await in this chapter of the Veil of Twilight's history. Defeating this new threat will require you to enter more dangerous and powerful Veil of Twilight as you increase your level to 30 and obtain new treasures. More powerful items also await. For uh, a weight from the corrupted green steel found in the Vale, after recent events have increased the magical power of the area. So once again, if you didn't catch that, we are going to go up to level thirty now. Yes, and it looks like there are going to be some new festivals also, including a mimic event where players have to hunt down mimics that have infested all the corners of the land. So how about that? People looking for mimics. <laughs> it's a mimic hunt. Everybody mimic. wants to go hunt mimics, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, this is more fun than looking for treasure chests. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a little weird. And then also uh, this autumn, there's going to bring a new seasonal festival that will haunt your favorite places and provide characters with more treats than tricks. So it sounds right. like we're getting some kind of new uh, Halloween event. Well, there was a follow-up to this letter where the producer answered a few questions. For example, are there bug fixes in the works? But I mean, well, of course there are bug fixes in the work. You know that. <laughs> All right, Dan. What about sentient weapons? And apparently, they're apparently they're not sure enough on sentient weapons to be a hundred percent sure on whether or not they're going to be getting them in. They're trying to get them in with the green steel because they're hoping they don't well out to each other, but apparently they're, they're not working well with each other at the moment. So they're trying to figure out how that gets to work before they commit to having green steel and sentient weapons come out at the same time. Though I'm not completely sure exactly what the green steel was. I know they're mentioned in the new storyline, but what's so great about green steel? They are like epic-type weapons that you can get and craft if you raid... They're like the higher end weapons that we basically are way, way, way far away from right now. Ah, okay. So it basically means nothing to us personally at this point. But I know a lot of people really want to see green steel uh, get reworked. So um, there's a lot of people that are interested to see what they do to these and these sentient weapons as well. All right. And of course, they're also asking about better networking hardware and better servers to handle the players. And they are discussing options on handling that, on upgrading the, upgrading the hardware and in moving the data center. And this will, and I know Turbine is doing that in general because they're also making the same type of discussions concerning Lotro. Anything else you found particularly interesting in this? They, uh, somebody also in the thread did ask, uh, can someone please be assigned to adding new relevant recipes to Kenneth Crafting? <laughs> <laughs> and Severlin said, we would love to revamp Ken- uh, Kenneth Crafting and have it extended into some of the higher levels and have discussed doing so. Our schedule is fairly aggressive, and if something needs to be cut in the revamp, this will likely be the candidate. For that reason, he didn't really add it to the producer's list. Oh, crafting, crafting, crafting. Yeah, 
and of course, they will continue their fight against lag. And I have a feeling, though, that the new data centers, one of the purposes of it is to help to combat. Yeah, lag. I'm kind of hoping with the new server hardware and the new move that will will fix that. But I know they are really looking at it. They know it's a problem. They realize it's a problem. They realize all of us players are getting frustrated with it. And, you know, I've heard, like, like I said last week, I've heard people talk about it, but I never had problems with that. But I know I was playing this weekend again, and wow, oh, wow, was it lacking. <laughs> so there definitely is some issue somewhere, and they are looking at it, and I'm pretty sure the d- data center and hardware moves will help that. Yes. And then he also talks about um, exploits. The uh, One of the comments in the, the thread was exploits have completely destroyed the in-game shard economy, anniversary events, uh, and crippled the angry game rating scene. Severlin goes on to say, we have already added several server side protections in the last patch, patch, excuse me, to close exploit holes, and they will continue to do so throughout the year. So they are definitely trying to hunt those down and close them before they become a problem. Yes. Unfortunately, sometimes players seem to have a better talent for finding exploits than... <laughs> <laughs> True. And, spe- then, and speaking of the Warlock class, somebody says, wait, isn't that basically the Pale Master? And he says, uh, we envision the Warlock class to concentrate mostly on the Eld- Eldr- uh, Eldritch Blast ability. I can't speak tonight. And yeah. ways to man- manipulate that Arcane Blast in various ways. While the Warlock does have spell abilities... They are closer to a ranged character than a traditional caster. Yes, and that does sound like the description of any form of Warlock I've heard of. I did read the Warlock in the 5th edition, and yeah, it did feel pretty much more like a a ranged class than a... And that's and I think the I think fourth edition worked that way. I'm pretty sure third edition too, though. It's hard to remember way back then. <laughs> yeah, that does seem like it was so long ago. Yes. And the last thing here that I've been excited about for a long time, and I'm kind of hoping they've done are going to do. They say this might also be the time to introduce the tiefling race as well, right? Hint, hint. Well, maybe not. Severlin says modifying all the helmets in the game for horns and modifying all the animations to add tails turns out to be really, really costly in time and art. Well, maybe they could have that, that well, that they cannot display horns and display helms or something like that. I know the tail thing, of course, is one they can't get around. The, well, but, the, a chief, but they like, get around the horns by saying that they can never wear a helm. I mean, they can wear a helm from the point of view of getting its stats, but not, not from the point of showing is probably something well, they would have to do. That could be true, but it sounds like my tiefling dreams have been dashed upon the rocks. Oh, well. I mean, they have done tieflings, obviously, since they exist in the House Fee Quests. Mm-hmm. And that's why I was so excited when we seen them. I was like, look, it's a tiefling. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be one. You want to be one. You want to be a vampiric tiefling? Oh, now that would be amazing. Make it happen, Turbine. Make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are there any vampiric tieflings in the DDO Chronicle, perhaps? And Bonnie Boo in the chat says, if, t- if tieflings are so expensive, they should do gnomes. Oh, gnomes. Who would want to be a gnome? Actually, a lot of people. I'm seen I'm that. a monster. Yeah, I'm a monster. Rawr. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people in the forums talk about gnomes. But uh, issue number 24 of the Chronicle is out. Let's take a look in the community spotlights. Dr. Spacebar, which is an awesome name, by the way, <laughs> wrote up some great DDO theme fiction. It's called Talon's Grip. You can click the link in the Chronicle and find out about Talon's Grip and read his pretty sweet fiction that he wrote. Full Full Moon Fury. I really can't talk tonight. I don't know what my problem is. (laughs) It takes a look at the Paladin slash Artificial Build. build. Click here. You might want to look at that since you always play Artificers all the time. Man, I really can't talk. This is horrible. Yes. (laughs) It's kind of hard to do a podcast when you can't talk, you know? Yeah. Um, Buddy Boo's Shroud Palooza was on Galanda on Saturday. 
I am pretty sure you'll be able to see that on YouTube soon. I haven't checked to see if she has that up yet. And speaking of Bonnie Boo, I'm going to give a hint for next week. She's going to be a, a guest host. So stay tuned next week, and you can hear all about Shroud Palooza from Miss Bonnie Boo herself on DDO Players News, episode number 16 next week. All right, then. Looking in the fansite news section of the Chronicle, DDO Cast looked at the state of the game in their past couple episodes. And the last episode, they were talking about new player integration. And I just want to thank them and thank Lessa for bringing us up as a, a great resource for new players. So if you haven't listened to the new DDO cast, go ahead over to their site and check that one out. Also, speaking of Lessa, the Damsels of DDO had a very special guest for their episode number five. I won't spoil that. You will have to check their episode out and see who it was. And it looks like that's about it for the Chronicle that jumped out at me this week. All right. Then let's head out into the community video update. Yes, we had a community update this week, and was there anything that wasn't in the community spot chronicle? <laughs> what I think they're doing with video updates are basically for people that want to watch it on YouTube and not read the chronicle is my thinking on why they do it, because it's usually the same information. Sometimes it's not. This week it was all the same, but still. You can go head over to DDO's YouTube, official YouTube channel, and check out Cordobin as he runs down everything that's in the Chronicle and tells you what's going on with DDO. All right. And anything going on in the store? Free sample of the week through January 15th is a lasting potion of resist acid. You get 20 of those, and you can use the code five times. That coupon code this week is LAST20, L-A-S-T-20. Once again, you can use that five times per account, but it is only one code per account, which doesn't make a lot of sense if you can use it five times, but okay. (laughs) (laughs) 25% off character slots, stat buff potions, healing items, spell potions, and uh, spell power potions, sorry, and questing tools. And that is it for the store. All right. And bonus days. Yes. Oh, that's. Oh, that ended already. That ended. That's why. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's go into the site news then. And we have a screenshot of the week where it looks like we continue with the theme of Lunar Escapes. Yes, but actually, this was not my shot. This was actually a user sent in shot we would like to thank uh edric of edric's blog for sending this in and he says edric takes a stroll through the vastness of the menectorian desert and that is our screenshot number three of the week you can check it out and it's kind of funny that he sent this in this week because i just went to the menectorian desert for the first time this week but you'll hear about that in a little bit right like how about right now Sure, we can do it. Go through your weekend video. Yes. <laughs> All right, my rogue reached level eleven, Ooh. and I did that basically by heading into the sands of Menectrian. I have not been there yet, so I thought now would be a good time to go. Um, did some of the slayers. I'm not really concentrating too much on the slayers. Um, I did. Some of the rares, actually, the rares were for once for me. With we all know how I am with the RNG. For oh, once, yes. the rares were like popping up like mad for me out there. Like I kept finding them left and right, so I got four of sixteen on my rares. So that's pretty good. I'm seven of twenty five on the explorer. I did a couple quests while I was out there. The for House P, I did one called the Desert Caravan. That quest is insane. House P has uh, four wagons, and you have to protect these wagons as they're being attacked from all sides. Just waves and waves come in. I did pretty good till the end, and unfortunately, um, I died. But I was very, very lucky in... At the same moment I died, I also killed the mob that killed me, so we basically killed each other. And the guy to turn in the quest 
happened to be right by the rare shrine. So I had my cleric grab my stone. He was out of uh, SP, so he couldn't res me. So I told him to grab my stone, and he ran over to the shrines. I resed up, I turned it in, and got the heck out of there because it was just crazy. All right. (laughs) And then I also did uh, a quest for the free agents while I was out there as well. Went into one of the tombs, the Chamber of Ramat. Um, That was insane, and I learned one thing. Mummy Rot is from the devil. (laughs) You only learned that now? Yeah, that's the first time I've ever gotten Mummy Rot. Because I I had it a few weeks back. Yeah, I remember that, and I remember you telling me how horrible it was, and I didn't, for some reason, didn't get it, but I got it out there, and it's like, holy crap, that is just evil. That is, like, Yeah, that's evil, evil all right. <laughs> My poor cleric was trying to, like, keep me alive, and it was just like, okay, this is insane. And then, plus, I was, like, trying to kill these mobs, and then I had, like, a couple red mobs in there, and, oh, it was insane. But that was a really fun quest that I'm hoping the rest of the, uh, the, the tombs out there will be kind of like that one. I really enjoyed that quest. And then uh, today I logged in and was doing some stuff, and I noticed that I had a quest for House D still open. This, of course, is not in the Menectorian Desert. This is in uh, House Denith. I did Spies in the House. And the only thing I'll say about Spies in the House, if you don't like jumping and you don't like flying around by air air jets, I would avoid this quest like the plague. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> there's a lot, a lot of traps a lot of jumping and a lot of air vents that you have to jump up into and get flown up in the air i enjoyed the quest after i got past that part of it um it was pretty challenging though but it's a really nice laid out quest and it's one of those quests where it's like multi-level so you have to like climb stuff and jump to get to the next part of the dungeon it's not linear per se. It's, you know, you have to jump and climb and get there and uh, solve a little bit of, well, I call them puzzles. It's basically you have to figure out which level uh, levers to use, which valves to turn on, and then uh, you have to use the jets to get to a couple high areas that you can't jump to. So it was a pretty well laid out quest, but wow, there's a lot of jumping in that quest. And that was it right. for my rogue. Then I created a level 2 paladin last Wednesday when we were playing. Um, We were getting ready to play, and one of our friends uh, was on Steam, and he said uh, he would like to check DDO out. He's played a little bit, but not a lot. So we ran through um, Korthos with him, and I will let you talk about that since you were there as well. Right, so we ran the bulk of the items there. Started out with, of course, the... Hello there, my name is Jeet's Quest. <laughs> then did Hayton's Rest, Kanan's Crystal, the Storehouse Secrets, and the Collaborator, the four that you do in the village at the start. And speaking and, of Jeet's, I, I have to bring this up because I mentioned to you on, on the Skype call. Right. I had forgot about that part. I, instead of skipping that whole thing since, since we were doing that on, on my character I created, I, I ran that quest. I had forgot how funny that line is that he says when he tells Salimus, don't worry, I'll watch your back. (laughs) Behind. Or behind, I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, you're behind. (laughs) I'll watch your behind as she's running away, and then he laughs evilly. (laughs) Anyway. Or mischievously, more likely. Hey, there you go, there you go. Yes. Cheats Cheats is so funny. (laughs) Yes, and we ran those on Elite. So we got to see some champions. Actually, those were the first champions I've had ever seen. Yeah, which I can't believe that's because that's what you said when I said, oh, yeah, there's a champion because they have a crown. And you right. said that, that was the first one you've seen. I thought for sure you ran into that. Or we have, but I guess we haven't. No, I don't think we I don't think we did too many things at Elite because whenever we do stuff at Elite on our higher level characters, we keep on getting killed. Yeah, we tend to die a lot when we try it on Elite. <laughs> And then we went off to Corthos Island and did Redemption, where running that on Elite also, we got through that pretty well enough. And then I think Drac and I were spinning the puzzle to open up the thing while, while Brian yeah. was sitting there wondering, okay, what's going on? <laughs> now, last week, last weekend I was at a convention 
a, a token convention, so therefore I didn't have much time to play DDO. So actually, this is that is, that is my complete list for DDO this week. Wow, that is like straight because yeah, you usually yeah. end up doing more than I do. So uh, we sometimes bounce back and forth on that matter. Yeah, that's true. Yes, but it was I had a busy week followed by an even busier weekend. So <laughs> hopefully, we'll get things back up to snuff for next time. So we'll go into donations, and yes. We would love to have a donation from you, and you can simply go to the donations page for DDO Players, where you can support the Players Alliance on Patreon. There you will find rewards, including a mention on the DDO Players News, or even be able to be a guest host with us. And while we did not receive any donations this week, we did receive not one, but two iTunes reviews. That's right, two reviews. And our first one was from the was from Cobold Mining Union by Gump's Gang and Foreman We Yip Yip Saw New DDO Podcast Must Use Worker Requisition See Cobold Mining Union Rulebook Cobold Still Hate You uh, Thanks for the new DDO Podcast <laughs> That's a great review I like that Alright and what was in Abub's review? He says, I am enjoying the new DDO podcast as well. I love that you guys are noobs in that it is a great perspective to bring to the DDO podcasting community. Also, I just generally prefer the heroic levels to epic stuff. So hearing about Korthos and House Quest again is great. And he did leave us a five-star review. So that makes us two reviews and two five-star reviews. So our average rating is five stars right now. All right, then. So do we put them together and make it a 10-star review? <laughs> we can do that. 10 stars. I like it. All right. We'll be then. the first 10-star rated podcast on iTunes. All right. Very well. Let's go to emails. And Indrik sent us an email in addition to that little screenshot. Hello, Draculetta and Pineleaf. This is Indrik. I'm the guild leader for the Crypt Crawlers over on the, the Lannis server. I also write in Dreek's blog. I just wanted to give you guys a quick shout out and tell you that you are doing a great job with the podcast and to keep up the great work. I really enjoy listening to your insights and thoughts about the DDO. I also wanted to take a second to look to add a submission to the screenshot of the week. Hope you like it. Thanks, and Dreek. And Dracula, what did you think about it? I really liked it. I liked it so much that it was the featured screenshot of the week this week. So That's <laughs> I right. did like it. And uh, like I said, it, it kind of just was funny because I had just went to the Menectorian Desert for the first time and his screenshot was of the Menectorian Desert. So it all kind of around, came around full circle and it all worked out good. So thanks for sending that in. And thanks for your blog. I've been reading it uh, for a while now and I really enjoy it. And I like the stuff that you put on there. So good job on your blog, too. All right, then. If you would like to send us a screenshot or just an email, you could contact us at podcast at ddoplayers.com. And you can also follow us at Twitter, the Players Alliance at Players Ally, DDO Players at DDO Players, Draculetta at Draculetta underscore 72, and Pineleaf at Pineleaf Needles. And we have three Players Alliance shows every single week that are live on Mondays at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We have DDO Players News. On Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have Guild Wars Players News. And on Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time is Locho Players News, and that is Server Time. And you can join us for our live shows at ddoplayers.com slash live. And that is all for tonight. And this is Piney Fields reminding you to look at those treasure chests carefully because they might be mimics.